An armed intruder broke into our home and my boyfriend hid in the bathroom and locked the door, leaving me alone. My boyfriend always told me he'd protect me no matter what, but the night our house was broken into, he left me alone. He got out of bed and ran out of the room, then locked himself inside the bathroom, leaving me to fend for myself. That's when the intruder entered my room pointing a firearm at me and told me to comply. He cleared out my jewelry and our emergency cash, all while my boyfriend stayed in the bathroom. When the coast was clear, my boyfriend Ken yelled from the bathroom, is he gone? I rolled my eyes and told him yes. I grabbed my phone to call the police. They showed up shortly after and asked us if we recognized the guy and we were hurt. We said no to both, and then they asked Ken what happened. He looked embarrassed as I told them our story. The police gave Ken subtle yet obvious disapproving glances as I spoke. He said they'd be on the lookout for the guy, and we should possibly get cameras. After they left, it was hard to go to sleep. I wondered if Ken would have protected me if that guy hurt me. I looked over at Ken, and he was out like a light. The next morning, I made us breakfast. When Ken came downstairs, I told him we needed to talk. He said if it was about last night, then he could explain. I said I was listening and began fixing our plates. He said that he had to defend himself, and his body went into fight or flight mode. The only thing that was going through his head was keeping himself alive. He said it was the adrenaline coursing through his veins that made him act with these instincts. I understood where he was coming from, but I still felt like he had no regard for my well-being. I told him that I sent him down there to protect our home, and it felt like he only cared about himself. He said that it wouldn't happen again, and he apologized and told me that at least neither one of us got hurt. This was true. I accepted his apology, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't 100% safe around him. This wasn't the first time he'd done something like this before. A few years back, I had a toxic ex who would stop my socials and try to show up wherever he saw me posting in real time. He couldn't accept the fact that it was over and would constantly try to meet with me to change my mind. One time, I posted a picture of my food at a restaurant that me and Ken was at, and even though I blocked all 12 of my ex's accounts, he saw my story and showed up. He walked over to my table and started begging to have me back. He yelled at me, saying that I was in that restaurant with a buster who couldn't love me like he could and calling me names. Ken stood there in disbelief. He didn't get my ex out of my face or anything, he just sank in his chair. The person who came to my rescue was our waiter who called the cops and had my ex escorted out. A few days later, ended up having to file for a restraining order on him with no help from Ken. This was in the early stages of our relationship, and I didn't fault him then because Ken didn't know the whole story between me and my ex. If anything, I thought that incident would run Ken off, but now I'm starting to look at him in a different light. A few days later, while we were at the movies, Ken and I grabbed some popcorn before we sat down. As we were walking to the theater, a dude bumped into me and knocked the popcorn out of my hand. Popcorn danced on the floor as it fell out of the bucket. Ken sat there watching. The guy looked over his shoulder and kept walking like nothing happened. I asked him if he was going to say anything, and he said we should just head to the theater so we wouldn't miss the movie. I was ticked off while watching the movie. Not only did my boyfriend not stand up for me, I didn't have any popcorn to enjoy. It was my mom's birthday, and everyone joined us at our parents' house to celebrate. Even my sister Tabitha. Me and Tabitha were bound at the hip since we were kids until she moved a couple of states away. Even though she lives in a different state now, every time we meet up, it feels just like it did when we were kids. I followed her to her old room in my parents' house and asked her to talk. I told her about how I was feeling with Ken. I told her about the break-in and the movie incident. She looked shocked after I told her everything I had been through with Ken. Girl, your life is a movie, she said, but not like the damsel in distress. It's more like a series of unfortunate events. I laughed and asked her what I should do. She said that even though Ken's lack of protection was concerning, I should stay with him. She said that he was probably right about acting out of fear and there wasn't any malice behind it. While I enjoyed talking to my sister and tried to see her point of view, the conversation didn't provide me much comfort. In fact, it made me doubt my security and my relationship even more. I didn't want to go to dinner dates as much with Ken anymore because I felt that if someone tried to rob us again, he'd run to the hills. I also just didn't feel comfortable in his presence as much as I did before. After we left my parents' house, I went home and texted my best friend to meet for brunch the next day. When I saw her, she was super happy to hang out. Our schedule had not aligned for weeks, and it was great seeing each other again. She asked me how life was and how me and Ken were doing. I told her everything I told my sister about the robbery, the movies, and something else. She was just as concerned as my sister was when she heard this. She would often call us Barbie and Ken because of how perfect our relationship was on the outside looking in, so this news came out of left field for her. She said she was sorry to hear that, and I asked her if she ever experienced that with her boyfriend, Brock. She said no, and talked about how, earlier in their relationship, Brock saved her life. They were on a date in New York celebrating their anniversary, and she was looking down at her phone for directions to the restaurant. She started crossing the street without looking, and just as she was halfway across the street, a bus was driving up. Brock noticed what was happening and ran to push her out of the way. She fell on the pavement safely on the other side of the road, and the bus screeched to a stop just inches before his face. I couldn't believe that Brock had risked his life to save her, and my man ran to the bathroom during a home invasion. I lost my appetite. I tried to seem happy for her. For the rest of our brunch, I sat there nodding and smiling, but inside I was dying. I felt that I wasted years with a man who didn't care about me or my well-being. The ride home felt like forever. The thoughts of my future with Ken replayed in my head. I wondered if I could happily marry a man who wasn't brave enough to protect me. These thoughts haunted me until I pulled into the driveway. That night, Ken decided to take me out for dinner as a way to apologize for not protecting me over the past few weeks. At dinner, a couple a few tables away began to argue. The guy yelled how unappreciated he felt. He said he took her to dinner after spending money on his wife all day, and he is being thanked with her nasty attitude. The woman replied, saying that she bet his secretary didn't have a bad attitude, and that he should probably be dining with her since they had in the past. He then smacked her out of her chair. People around us gasped, and a couple of men stood up to defend
defend the woman and take down her partner. I looked over at Ken. He had a timid look on his face and began turning red. He sunk down into his seat and looked towards the exit. He began to get up with the other men, but instead of walking to the table to help the woman, he ran to the back of the restaurant. It felt like it did in the beginning of our relationship again. He didn't protect me from my ex then and was running away from me now. That coward. I knew he didn't have it in him. I left money on the table for the bill and dragged him to the car. The whole time, all I could think about was how he ran away from everything. He didn't have a brave bone in his body, and it saddened me that I hadn't realized it all these years. I tried to look past my emotions because Ken was great in every other way as a partner. I didn't want my feelings to ruin a great relationship. The next day, we went to the dog park as a special treat for our dog, Gigi. She loved playing with the other dogs even though she was a small chihuahua. Me and Ken sat on a bench and let Gigi roam freely, until this huge Rottweiler walked up to Gigi and began barking at her. She ran back to me and jumped in my lap. The Rottweiler began barking at me and seemed like it was going to bite me. Ken jumped behind me. Just then, the Rottweiler's owner called out to it and whistled. The Rottweiler, almost in an instant, ran back to its owner. The man came back and apologized. He said his dog is learning that smaller dogs aren't small game to prey on, and that was it. I smacked Ken on the shoulder and asked what was that. He said what was what, and I said why didn't you help me with the dog? He said it could have bitten him. I asked what about me. He said that he couldn't save both of us. He argued if both of us had gotten mauled by the dog, then who would be able to call the ambulance? He said he was looking out for the both of us. I was furious. My blood boiled, but I couldn't do anything. He had shown me time and time again that I couldn't trust him in times of danger. I just hoped for better. I hoped that his other qualities as a partner would outshine those moments. I knew I couldn't be with him much longer. The next day, I drove back over to my parents' house and talked to my mom. Apparently, my sister and mom had been talking before because as soon as I asked her to talk, she knew it was about Ken. I gave my whole spill and the new incident at the dog park and told her I didn't know what to do. On one hand, I had an amazing partner who listened to me, was fun, and who I considered my best friend. And on the other hand, I had someone that I couldn't rely on to protect me even in small instances. Mom said that the quality that she loved the most about my dad was how much of a man he was. He was strong, kind, and protected our family. She went on to validate my feelings and said that while love was important in our relationship, feeling safe and protected was equally crucial. Sorry, I asked her how I would know if I should stay with Ken or not, and she then said that it truly depended on the qualities that I looked for in a partner. If I wanted someone like dad, Ken clearly didn't fit the bill. I realized that after seeing how my dad treated my mom over the years, I wanted the same thing to reflect in my relationship. I began to cry, and my chest tightened up. I knew what I had to do, and without saying anything, mom knew my decision. She hugged me and held me for a long time. I went back home and met Ken in the living room. I told him that we needed to talk, and he turned off the TV. He looked at me a bit concerned, as if he knew what I was going to say. I began with how I loved our relationship and our dynamic. His eyes started to look more cheerful, and as I said, but I don't feel safe around you, the joy left in an instant. I recounted all the opportunities he had to protect me, and how he failed in every single one, even the little things. I told him that I realized that I wanted a partner who would protect me and not just himself. He tried to rebuttal with the same arguments from before, saying that it was just instinctual for him to behave that way, and that he could try to change, but I told him that I didn't want to change him, and I couldn't live a life feeling insecure with my partner. I told him that I would be packing up my stuff that night and moving out. He begged for me to stay, and it was hard to refuse. After years, of being together, moving out together, and being each other's best friend for years, it was hard not to feel like I was making the wrong decision. The next day, I felt an odd sense of relief, like a burden was lifted off my shoulders. I started to realize that the reason I stayed in that relationship so long was because we had a history together, instead of making sure each other's needs were being met. A few years later, after moving back in with my parents, I met a new guy, Brad. Brad was strong, confident, and charming. He was fun to be around, and slowly but surely, I started envisioning my life with him. When he asked me out, I was beyond happy. He made me feel safe around him, and I quickly agreed. After dating Brad for a few years, I finally realized how important it was to have courage and reliability in my partner, and it felt bittersweet that I had to learn that through Ken. 